Though on the sign it is written, don't pluck these blossoms, it is useless against the wind, which cannot read. In a radio adaptation of Richard Mason's novel, The Wind Cannot Read, the part of Michael Quinn is played by Martin Jarvis, Sabby by Tsai Chin, the Brigadier by Alan Wheatley, and Fennec by Anthony Valentine. Stop! Who goes there? Friend. That makes two of us. Where are you? In front of you. Good evening. Are you our heir? Yes, our heir strip was overrun. Any more of you? No, we got broken up. I hope you'll excuse my appearance. Yes, of course. What happened to your trousers? Dysentery. I had to go 23 times before sundown, so it seemed more practical to leave them off. Good last time. <laughs> got anything to smoke? No, I'm afraid not. Do you know where we are? <laughs> not a clue. But if we press on south, we're, we're bound to meet up either with our side or theirs. Mm. Those are the only alternatives. Well, there's a third, the jungle. Well, if you feel like that, you'd better make your own arrangements. Personally, I'm all for survival. Isn't it rather improbable that we'll ever find our own people? Improbable, perhaps. Impossible, certainly not. Now, look what I've got here. Good Lord. Where'd you get it? It was strapped to the back of a dead Japanese RT man. Are the batteries working? Faintly. Listen. I got Sierra Lynn a minute ago. Well, let's see what we can find. Makes you think, doesn't it? It doesn't make me think of anything So how nice it would be to get out of here. Do you intend lugging that thing along? Oh, not now I've got you to talk to. How long have you been on your own? Seems like two years. It's probably a couple of days. Mm. What is it? Turn that thing off. Some more stragglers? I don't think so. Must be forty or fifty. You ever seen live japs before? Fortunately, no. We'll certainly never see any again if they catch sight of us. You believe the atrocity stories? I know that any soldier worth his salt is jumpy as hell in the jungle. at it again. Try to hold it. I am bloody trying. How are you feeling? Damned awful. What's your name? Michael Quinn. And I don't like being called Mike. I'm Peter. Peter Torrington. And I don't like being called Pete. <laughs> I suppose we're now... Officially behind enemy lines. Well, not necessarily. The enemy may be as lost as we are. Yes, the difference is there are more of them. Look, what if we just forget about it? Try and get some sleep. There's no uh, point in crashing on in the dark. Have you tried sleeping in the jungle? I know about the ants. Well, don't blame me if we wake up dead. You sure you haven't got a cigarette? You're out of luck. You should have chummed up with someone else. Oh, you'll do. Uh, where do you propose bedding down? Where we are. We're too near that track. I don't really care anymore. Japanese don't keep to the tracks anyway. Right then. We sleep here. Oh, I suppose we will win this bloody war. Do you ever ask yourself why we should win it? Oh, because we're civilized. Isn't it something like that? We thought we would die in that jungle. But we did not die. We found our side. Or at least they found us. I was sent on a month's leave to Simla in the Himalayas. After that, it was back to Delhi and a series of attendances at the medical board. And finally, an appearance before a very affable wing commander. Good morning, Quinn. Do sit down. Thank you, sir. We've been giving a lot of thought to the results of your medical tests. Now, how long have you been having these dizzy spells? They started in Burma, sir. And only when you're flying? Yes, sir. Well, we've decided to ground you. Oh. Uh, no, don't worry, old chap. It's not the end of the world. 
You didn't actually like flying, did you? In a way, I did, sir. It seemed to have some immediate bearing on the war. Well, I'm sure we can find you something interesting. Quick promotion and staff pay. <laughs> you never know, old chap. We might surprise you. Thank you, sir. Now you know the worst. Why not relax? Go and enjoy yourself. Michael? My God, it is Michael! Peter, good to see you. I want you to meet a friend. Mervyn Bentle. Mervyn, this is the chap I was telling you about. Michael Quinn. <laughs> Glad to meet you, old Madeline. Hey, I hear you actually saw the enemy marching by. Oh, both of us did. Oh, I never mentioned this, Michael, but I had my eyes shut at the time. My bowels, you'll remember. You all right now? Well, except for the odd twinges. Well, when do you plan to leave? I thought you might offer me a drink first. Oh, I mean leaving Delhi. You're going to Bombay, aren't you? Well, no one's actually invited me. I think Peter's talking about the course. Mm. Well, haven't you been told? No. But if it affects my immediate future, perhaps one of you tell me what you're talking about. You and I, and goodness knows who else, are going to Bombay to learn Japanese. <laughs> I saw your name on the list. Learn <laughs> Japanese? You serious? Well, I wouldn't attempt to make a joke about learning Japanese. Just imagine when His Most Excellent Majesty, whatever his name is, finally surrenders to the gunboats. There we'll be in the Imperial Palace, hobnobbing in fluent Japanese with what remains of his general staff. I thought they all went to eat. Well, the two who didn't. We'll be able to talk to them. Putting aside your Imperial Palace, what's really the point of this? Oh, the interrogation of prisoners. We wait until a Jap is shot down, then we ask him his name, and uh, where is the big attack coming? It's already come. That's how we met, remember? Well, we could ask, uh, what are your weak points? Oh, it'll all be quite safe, I'm informed. We'll do this at headquarters, and there'll be two Gurkha guards pinning the Japs' arms down. Mm, Japanese don't use parachutes, so there'll be no Air Force prisoners. I gather that's why so few people have been selected for the course. I tell you, Michael, it's the cushiest job this side of running a naffy canteen in Knightsbridge <laughs> Barracks. There's just one snag, however. What's that? I understand we're really expected to learn the language. <laughs> We've got to learn to think backwards and write upside down. And learning Japanese is the shortest cut to the madhouse ever devised by man. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Uh, do sit down and smoke if you wish. I hope you all had a pleasant journey down from Delhi. As you'll have gathered, I'm in charge of your instruction. That's why I'm badged as a brigadier, so that we'll all know who's who. Although we're pretty easy with the formalities here. Now. Our business is to learn a very complex, but in some ways a very beautiful language. You speak Japanese yourself, sir? Oh, yes, I've spent most of my life there. And that reminds me, if you entertain any ideas that our enemies in that part of the world are barbaric savages, I personally would prefer you to keep those ideas to yourself. Well, they have been atrocities, sir, against people taken prisoner. Atrocities in our eyes, yes. The Japanese have little use for the fighting man who surrenders. He expects no mercy himself. And he doesn't expect us to expect any mercy. Isn't that in itself a form of barbarism, sir? Again, from our point of view, yes. But if you're going to learn the Japanese language, it'll be a great help if you try to see the world a little through Japanese eyes. Now, I'm going to leave you for a moment while I get your instructor. As you'll see, your instructor is a Japanese. And that's why I prefer to see you alone first, in order to make my point about your attitude towards Japanese people. Oh, we are at war with them, sir. Well, quite so. But one day we shall have to live in peace with them. Now, I'll be back in a few moments. Well, I hadn't thought of this. We had to kowtow to some Jap teacher. Well, maybe some of them are all right. You can say that after being hunted down in the jungle. Well, I can say that because I wasn't hunted yes, down in the jungle. No, you know what I mean. How did it That's strike you, Michael, being face to face with them? Eh? I saw as much of them as Peter did. Huh? A few silhouettes marching by in the night. And if they'd seen you, what do you think would have happened? I don't imagine I would be about to learn Japanese at this moment. Oh, maybe you would. Tied to a tree while I use you for bayonet practice. <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting, gentlemen. May I introduce you to your instructor? Well, isn't anyone going to say good morning? It's all right, sir. Good morning. Uh, madam. You will call your instructor Miss Wei. That's the name she's using over here. Isn't Wei a Chinese name, sir? Exactly. And that is why she is using it. But you are Japanese, Miss Wei. Yes. I am from Tokyo. But I have spent many years in your country. Where do you know in England? I have lived in London, in South Kensington. I have also visited Scotland and went once to Wales. May I ask why you're in India? To help 
the Allied war effort, if that is correct English. Miss Wei has been sent here specially to teach Japanese. Well, I'm going to leave you now, but I shall come back to the class from time to time to see you're all sticking at it. Good luck. Thank you, Thank you so much. And now, please... Quiet, the teacher. <laughs> and now, I wish to know your names. I think you have a list there, haven't you? Oh, yes. But I do not know yet which name is which. You are? Michael Quinn. Oh, Quinn. Thank you. And you? David Lamb. 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 Oh, I, I think they spell your name wrong. L-A-M-B. <laughs> Thank you, Lamb. And you are? Flight Lieutenant Fennec. Let me see. Oh, yes, Fenwick. Fenwick. The W is silent. May I ask you a question, Miss Ware? I think I go down the list first. Well, I think I ask question first. Go on, old man. I say, old man, you're going to fluster A teacher, if that's what she is, has no right to be flustered. May I ask my question? If you wish, Fenwick. It's not really so much a question as something I want to point out. We're all officers in this class. It's usual for our rank to be used when we're being addressed. However, if you don't know our ranks, as a matter of common courtesy, you might use Mr. Fenwick, you have some Of course, much. being a foreigner, you might not be aware of our customs. So I thought I should point this out. For God's sake, Fenwick, shut up. Yeah, go on, sit down. Come on. I am sorry. I did not realize. I have heard the brigadier speak that way. The brigadier has a right to speak that way. I offer you my most humble apology. Freud, Lieutenant, is it? It was very rude of me. Well, I just thought I should say something. If you ask me, Mr. Fenwick, you've said quite enough. Miss Way, uh, I trust that you will be our instructor for, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I do not deserve such compliment. I have not yet taught you anything. Oh, but you have. You've already taught us how to accept an insult with dignity. Mary Torrington, I think uh, Mr. Really... Torrington, if you don't mind, Mr. Fenwick. Miss Way? Oh, it is Mr. Quinn. Are you in a great hurry? No, I don't think so. Only we're running. I hope it isn't because you're so pleased to escape from school. No, please do not think that. You don't mind my speaking to you in the street? Of Out of the school? Of course not. Have you a question to ask? Something I did not explain properly in the lesson? No, it's more an apology I wish to make. That outburst of Flat Lieutenant Fenix about handles to our names. I cannot think how I was so stupid. Well, I just wanted to tell you that the rest of us hadn't noticed. But it was so silly of me. I did not know what I was saying. It is first time I have tried to teach, and there seem to be so many people. <laughs> Only ten. At first, it seemed like hundreds. You'll get used to our faces. We aren't very frightening, really. Um, may I drop you? Drop me? You don't wish to know me. I wish very much to know you. I mean, if I can get a gari, can I drop you off oh. where you live? <laughs> I'm going to hotel. Good, that's on my way. You, you know where it is? No, but it doesn't matter. But I don't want to take you out of your way, please. You take first Gary and I'd find other Gary. Uh, well, we've got to get one first. Hey, over here. Gary, sir. Yes, please. Uh, what is your hotel called? The Mayfair. I have to pass right by the door. <laughs> Let me help you up. <sighs> You are most kind. Didn't you know all Englishmen are kind? Except when they behave like pigs. <laughs> to the Mayfair, driver. Mayfair, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's rather a squeeze, isn't it? <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> when did you last admit to woman? I can't really remember. Is it so obvious? No, not too obvious. <laughs> Don't you hate Japanese? Well, it's obviously not an easy language. I mean Japanese people. Japanese woman. Hate is a very strong word, Miss Way. I... I hate bad Japanese, but I do not hate good Japanese. Then at least we both hate the same people. Oh! Why is driver mouth hurt? I hadn't noticed it was. It is all red inside. You look... Oh, yes, they chew betel nut. You can see them selling it in the bazaar. They make it into a sticky paste and spread it on leaf. What is bazaar? Where the Indians go shopping. Can anyone go and see? I was going there now. Have you time to come with me? Yes. But perhaps you will not care to take me. Why not? 
You are perhaps already meeting someone. No, I'm not meeting anyone. But you are sure it is all right. Well, since I'm not meeting anyone there, and now have the opportunity to accompany a charming woman there, nothing could be more all right. I am Japanese. You are sure you won't get into trouble? You're my teacher. And if anyone wants to know, we're talking Japanese to each other. <laughs> but you have only learned 20 words today. Ah, you'd be surprised what one can do with 20 words with a little skill and imagination. I say, are you feeling all right? Hi. Quite all right, thank you. But you don't look well. Oh, it is the heat. I have become accustomed to English climate. Oh. Please, do not worry about it. and the delectable yeah. Miss Way. Good afternoon, Mr. Bento and Mr. Perry. Good afternoon. We can cut all the formalities now, can't we? We're out of school. What brings you both to the bazaar? The same as everyone else, maybe to buy, mainly to look. Cheerio. Miss Way would really like to look at something. Let me show you the beggars. Yes, if you don't mind, Mr. Quinn. No, you go along. I'll wait here. This way, Miss Way. <laughs> Well, you watch a bit of the Oriental then, Michael, old man? I happened to bump into her coming out of the school. We decided to share a garage. Yes, of course, old man. I haven't worked all my life in the King's Road, Chelsea, without looking the facts of life. I'm sure if you'd offered to share your garage with her, she would have accepted. Easy as that, is she? Oh, don't be such a bloody-minded bore. I simply meant there's nothing between us. Well, I'm glad about that. Because before you start getting any romantic ideas about that exceptionally pretty Japanese face, take a look at this poster over here. You see? Yes, the smiling face of the Japanese soldier. Only, as you'll see, it is only a mask. Behind it, the real face has bared teeth and narrowed eyes. And see what the caption says. Beware the mask of friendship. It may hide Japanese treachery. Are you suggesting this way is a Japanese spy? I'm suggesting you might remember Pearl Harbor. Oh, I know, it's a bit of a cliche. But how do you think his most imperial Mikado knew when the fleet was in if some friendly Japanese-American hadn't told him? Eh? You've got a suspicious mind, Mervyn. Or a loyal one. Or then again, you could simply say, I don't wish to end up having my throat cut. Perhaps you could pack it in now. They're coming back. I am really most terribly sorry. I didn't realize that you would be so upset. I... It's quite all right. Thank you. What's happened? Well, I think it's better if we don't talk about it. This way is rather distressed. It was the beggars. There was a child mutilated. Oh, you didn't show one of those. I'm sorry. I didn't stop to think. Is it true what they say? They do that to their children so as to collect money? Didn't one of your emperors once mutilate the Christians, Miss Ware? For Wayne? God's sake, Merlin. That was very long time ago. I think I go back to hotel now. Yes, I'll try to find Perhaps a Perhaps you would prefer to stay with your friends. I get Gary... What's the matter? I forget. I have no money. You needn't have given it all to the beggars, Miss Way. She gave them more than they'd get in a month. I, I have never seen anything like that. Mr. Quinn, if you could lend me a few rupees... I will accompany you back to your hotel, Miss Wade. See you tomorrow. Yes, old man. Work hard at your Japanese. You know, Mervyn, I, I've never seen a woman so upset. When in Rome, do as the Romans. I don't understand. She put on a good act for us squeamish oh, English. Aren't you being a little unkind? No, old man, but realistic, if you like. Which floor, Saib? I want room number 43. Yes, Saib. Third floor. Is the lady expecting you, Saib? I don't think so. But I asked the receptionist if it was all right to go up. Do you know Miss Way? Slightly, Saib. Do you know what's the matter with her? No, Saib. Only that she has not left her room for three days. Doctor came and went. Third floor, Saib. Down the corridor to your left. Thank you. Yes, Saib. Miss Way. Mr. Quinn. Oh, you should not see me in bed. Are you angry with me? Not angry, but I should not be in bed to greet you. You're not well. How are you now? It is only little headache. I am swinging the lead. <laughs> We've missed you at the school. The brigadiers had to teach us. He speaks Japanese very finely. Ah, but he's not as good looking as you. Now I should hide face to conceal smile. Please don't hide face. What did the doctor say? He comes and gives me nasty pills. Did the brigadier send you to scold me? He's furious with you. You are pulling leg now. <laughs> that is very naughty. We were all very worried about you. Somebody has sent me beautiful flowers. Please 
Can you tell me if it was school people? It might be. You are teasing. I think you know who sent flowers. Is there nobody else but school people who might have sent them? There is one friend, but he has already sent nice grapes, and he sent card with his name with the grapes. No card came from the flowers. Are you Sabishi? Oh, you have learnt a new word. I did not teach you, Sabishi. Well, the brigadier said we all looked Sabishi when you failed to turn up, and we had to have him instead. Oh, Seiji. Sorry? It, it means you speak compliment. Ah. <laughs> Really, I am not Sabishi at all. I have got lots of reason to be happy, except for sick headache. Now I really have two friends in Bombay. I have person who sent grapes and person who sent flowers. I think person who sent flowers was you. I hope you didn't mind. Why not mind? It is nice of people to be friendly with Japanese women. Well, it doesn't matter what you are so long as you have a good heart. No, I have got selfish heart. All I think of is me. Is that why you've come all the way out from England to help us? That is because I like English people. They have been good to me. In Japan, there is a lot of badness now. There's a lot of badness everywhere where there's war. Um, can I ask you a personal question? I hope so. What were you doing in England? <laughs> I was spy for the Imperial Japanese Navy. <laughs> Every day I counted how many children sailing boats <laughs> on Serpentine in Hyde Park and sent message by balloon all the way to Tokyo. Now, be serious. I cannot be serious. When you come to visit me, I feel like I don't know the word. You're being skittish now. Be serious. All right, I tell you. My father went to Europe on business, taking me and my mother. They were angry because I would not marry the man they had chosen. They thought if we all went on trip, I would change my mind. But English people were so kind, I was happy there. My father said, now we go back. But I would not go back. Instead, I got job. Teaching Japanese? No, I was cheeky girl. In Japan, it is very great art to arrange flowers. Did you know that? I think it's all we know about Japan. In Regent Street, there is flower shop. When I saw their flowers in the window, it made my heart cry. It was not very good, and I remember all I had been taught. So I went in and said, please, let me arrange flowers. <laughs> the manager did not understand, so I showed him. He was so happy and gave me job. Are you sorry you didn't go back to Japan? No. I don't want to marry anyone that I am told to. But now there's a war, and you're a long way away from home. You're on the wrong side of the line. No. I am lucky. It is my mother who is on the wrong side of the line. Now, can I ask you a very personal question? I hope so. <laughs> Must I call you Mr. Quinn? Well, drop the Mr. if you like. Oh, you are teasing me. I mean, you take me to Bazaar, and now you call at my hotel and see me in my big bed. Can I use the first name? It's Michael. I know. I want to hear you say your name again. I don't even know your first name. Sabi. Rename Hanako, the flower child. But people who take me to bazaar and send me flowers without card and see me in my big bed call me Sabi. Does Sabi mean something in Japanese? Of course. Sabi is a special word meaning Japanese woman who likes English man called Michael. Uh, we have no special word for Englishman who likes Japanese girl called Sabi. <laughs> you are only one who visits me. What about your friend who sent the grapes? Oh, yes, of course. He visits me. May I ask who he is? I... I cannot say, but he is an older man. Oh. One day, perhaps, I explain. I meant no other officers learning Japanese at school have visited me. I think the others are afraid. Because I am Japanese? Like smiling mask on poster in bazaar. No, because you are too beautiful. Men are afraid of very beautiful women. I have tiny nose, Japanese nose. It's a charming nose. Why should men be afraid of women they think beautiful? In case they're snubbed. That is very cowardly. Are you afraid of me? Terrified. Then you are a brave man to come here. If there's something you want very much, it isn't difficult to be brave. You make me very excited. It is not good to be so excited. Sabi, I want very much to kiss you. I think... I would like that very much, if you are a brave man. Oh, 
Sabi. 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 Please be brave, Mark. Be very brave. Oh, yeah. Morning, Michael. Wherever did you get to last night? I went to see some yogis. Oh, yeah. the mysterious yeah. East getting to you at last. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. I'm sure you'll all be pleased to know that your teacher, Miss Way, is now fully recovered. Oh, um, do come in, Miss Way. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Miss Way. Sit down, gentlemen. Yeah, you. Do I feel better, Miss Way? Perfectly better. Thank you, Mr. Fenwick. Well, I'll leave you to Miss Way's tender mercies. But uh, go easy with her. She may still be a bit fragile. Yes, will the lovers, I <laughs> You will excuse me, please, but I must first remind myself how much you know and how well you have worked with the brigadier. Mr. Fenwick? Can you count to ten, please? Um, yes. Um, it, me, san, she, go, roko. Loco. Uh, roko. Hitchy, hatchy, kyu, ju. Very good, Mr. Fenwick. Now, Mr. Lamb, please continue from eleven to twenty. Yes. Uh, juichi, juni, ju song, ju shi, ju, ju go. Juroku, Juishi, Juhachi, Juku, Niju. Oh, very excellent. I'm sure that's because we have a very excellent teacher, Miss Ware. Mr. Fennick, you are most kind. And now, Mr. Um... Quinn. Michael Quinn. Oh, yes. Mr. Michael Quinn. Tell me in Japanese where you were born. Um. What actually why I give us a no Tewksbury to you to coro de Omari Master. Good. Are you a good man? Daria Kush Te Masu. Gentlemen, I want you to repeat in English what Mr. Michael Quinn is saying. What did he just say in answer to my question, Are you a good man? I try to be. Are you? An honourable man. Please vary the form of the answer. Yes. Um, uh, hi. It's more, Signor de Kirusto de Aritai to Omote Masu. I always hope to be an honourable man. man. Are you a man who keeps promises? Ah. Sewa Yaksuku ni Orimasu. That depends on the prices. Oh, that is not very honourable. Is that another question? No, it is a comment. And now, Mr. Torrington, will you please recite the poem we learned before I was taken ill? Visiting the yogis, eh? Yes, they interest me. Well, someone happened to tell me they saw you entering a certain hotel. Ah, am I missing something? What's Michael been up to? Uh, that's just what I'm trying to find out. But there was just the glimmer of a twinkle in Miss Way's eye at class ah, just now. I ah. think she was glad to be back with us, that's all. All right, you keep your private life to yourself. Well, look, how are you fixed this evening? We've got a party to go to. Well, I... Uh, well, not the yogis again. Hey, I've only just caught on to this. Is Michael having it off with Miss Way? Uh, that is obviously going to remain a state secret. Well, how about the party, Michael? Well, I really am rather busy. Ah, the delectable Miss Way. Oh. How do you feel after your first day back with us? Very fine, thank you. And did uh, you go to see the yogis last night? Perry. Yogis? May I call a Gary for you to take you to your hotel? Oh, it's very kind... I was thinking of walking. Or perhaps Mr. Quinn was going my way. I'm not sure. You were saying about this evening, Peter. Uh, oh, well, it's entirely up to you. I, uh, don't let me ruin anything. No, I'd be glad. Then a Gary for Miss Way. Hey, you, Blackfellow, over here on the double. Mm. Mm. Oh, Michael. <laughs> Flying off is a quinn. Try to control yourself. Come on, Rosie. Don't be silly. Give me a curse. Mm. All right. Mm. Have you never kissed your Asian woman before? There's no time to go into politics. Give me a kiss. You're drunk. 
A tight yes drunk no. Are you going to kiss me or not? If you very much want. Mm. Mm. And since you run the whole country... You can have it all back, cross my heart. Oh, what would I have to do for that? Let me make love to you. If you want to, you can. Well, don't you want to? Oh, this isn't the place. We could go back to the boarding house. After all, I do own it and I have a private apartment. Do you entertain many of your lodgers? <laughs> the question is, do they entertain me? Do I entertain you? Of course. <laughs> If you wish, I've got my car outside and we can be back in my apartment in 15 minutes. Except I don't think that you do wish. I thought it was what you wanted. That is true. Well? I don't care to have my throat cut. What do you mean? Ah, that I know about your little Japanese girl. News travels fast in the British Raj, you know. Peter told me. Is that why he invited me to this party? No, no, no. I think he expected you to bring her. I didn't get that impression. Because you are sensitive. You know, I would like you to make love to me. It's not often that I have that particular pleasure nowadays. You're not old. Shall we say past my first youth? <laughs> ah, but it would not be good for you, and I don't need fun so badly that I must make you unhappy. And why did you lead me on? Hmm? Pride, perhaps. I like to think that a nice boy may still lose his head for a minute over me. <laughs> ah... But you are a silly boy. Your Miss Way is a sweet and a good girl. Peter has said so very beautiful, he said. I don't want to talk about her. Because you are afraid. No, you don't know anything about it, not as Peter. I think I know. You are afraid. Afraid of what? To face things. Well, there are many things that are not worthwhile facing. Oh, yes, it's always so easy to say that. It's easy to go through life and say nothing is worthwhile to face. But it is not a good life. You know... You could perhaps make someone very happy. And not to do so is a little selfish. That's what the yogis said. You really did go to see the yogis. I thought that was covering up something else. No, I really did, but not last night. Now tell me, tell me. Why are you at this party trying to make love to a middle-aged Eurasian boarding house keeper? I don't know. But I do. You see, I'm very fond of you, Mike. I believe you are afraid to be in love with a girl who is sweet and kind, so you have taken the first chance to run away. She's Japanese. Is that all there is to the problem? Well, isn't that enough? There's a war on people are being killed. It can't last forever. It has done already for the dead. But you are the living. Ah, I think you're only making an excuse about her being Japanese. Where is she now? In her hotel, I suppose, in bed. Good. We shall go in my car. Oh, Rosie, I can't. There's something I've learned, Michael, probably through running a boarding house. People need people. They need people to watch over them, to get them to work hard. And they need people to get them to enjoy themselves. Come on, come on, get on your feet. But I can't have you drive me there. Well, then drive the car yourself. Driving frightens me anyway. Now, come oh, on. Come oh, are you two off for the night, then? You don't think I came here just for the drink, <laughs> do you? I don't know why anybody came. Unless it was to see me get drunk. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, Michael, have you heard we're all going to get a month's leave? No. Yeah? When? Him and all, boy. The problem is, who do they go on leave with? Ah, look. There's a little staff nurse yeah? over there all by herself. Yeah? Why not invite her? Oh, oh that's an idea. <laughs> Hello, little staff nurse. <laughs> How would you like to take my temperature? <laughs> I really don't know what to say. Don't say anything. I could say how grateful I am. Because I discouraged you from making love to me? Or because I have made you deliver yourself to your sweetheart's hotel? Perhaps because you've delivered me from myself. Thank you. I shan't forget this, Rosie. You're a good sport. If you want to repay me, let yourself love your girl. If life doesn't include love, there's no point in living it at all. Good night. Good night. Sabby? Sabby? Who is it? It's me, Michael. Oh, I put light on. No, we have the moonlight. 
I am so happy. I lie here thinking of you at wicked party. It was a very moral party. I do not mean wicked, wicked party. I mean party is wicked to take you away from me. Yet you didn't complain that I was going. You are free man. Yes. While I was there, I discovered my reason for going. For drinking and dancing? No. It's because I was a coward. Afraid of falling in love. You are still afraid? Not now, Sappy. I love you very much. You speak compliment. I speak truth. I must tell you truth. You tell me anything you want to. It is something very terrible. I did not tell you before because I think perhaps you would not love me. Nothing could be terrible enough to do that. You say that now. Perhaps you will not say that when I tell you. Well, you needn't tell me anything if you don't want to. Yes, I tell you. Then you can leave me if you think Japanese girl is no good. At least then I know why you leave me. All right, if it's something on your mind. Before I told you white lie about reason why parents took me to Europe. You said it was because you wouldn't marry the man they'd chosen. Hi, but there is more. For my father, it would make nice business arrangements. When I refused the third time, my father was very much ashamed. Your father was ashamed? If Japanese daughter defies father, it brings great shame on whole family. Perhaps for sake of father and mother, I would marry this man if bad things did not happen. That is what I must tell you about Michael. Go on. Before, always there was someone with us. Until one time, my father de deliberately left us alone to walk in garden at night. I was 18, and nobody told me what happened when people make love. This man was very brutal. I screamed, and he put his hand over my mouth. After that, I knew nothing until I was lying in my bed my mother sitting beside me, crying. My father never forgave me. He was so ashamed, he took my mother and me to England. All the rest I have told you truthfully. Now I think you will not want to love me anymore. What if I love you even more now? That is too much for a Japanese girl with scarlet path to hope for. Sometimes our best hopes become true, Sebi. Will you marry me? Please, Michael, do not ask that. Sabi, what is it? Whatever happens, you will never have to marry me. Well, it isn't a question of have to. Can we talk of something else? All right. Let me tell you some good news. We're getting a month's leave. I heard about it at the wicked party. I know. You know? Of course, I am teacher. We could go on leave together. I was thinking of a place I went to before, up in the Himalayas. Too far away for anyone to know about the war. Everybody knows about the war. Well, we needn't. Think of it, darling. For a whole month, we shall escape. I... I would like that. Shall I make another sandwich? No, thanks. There is any more tea in the thermos flask. I'll look. Yes, a little. Give me your cup. <sighs> this is our last picnic. I know. What time must we catch nasty train back to Bombay? Eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Here's your tea. Thanks. I have been thinking, Michael. I do not like hotels. Oh, I thought you'd been so happy here. This is holiday hotel, like in Dream. I mean, Mayfair Hotel in Bombay. Oh. When we go back, could we please find a house together for a little while? We'd have to keep it a secret. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It isn't easy to find a house in Bombay. I think you do not want house with me. I think I want house with you in Bombay more than anything in the world. <laughs> we shall find a house. Mm. <laughs> do you still love that bee? Yes, darling. As much as before? Oh, yes. And differently. Would you like to go back to old times? In a way, yes. Sometimes I think I'd like to go back to when I saw you in the classroom for the first time. Did you think I was horrible woman? <laughs> I thought you were beautiful woman. <laughs> I believe that part of me must have known then that we were going to have a month together in the Himalayas. You are inventing. At first you did not like me at all. Now, that is not true. It's also fishing. What is fishing? We're well, looking for compliments. Oh, that is very bad for a Japanese woman to do. I do not wish to go fishing. <laughs> Please, hmm? tell me, 
what you thought of the very first time you saw me. I wondered what it would be like to kiss you. I've never seen a Japanese woman before. Did you think you would try to kiss Japanese women? Yes, I did. And why did you not kiss when you were with her in the gallery with the driver who had red teeth? Because she might have snubbed me or slapped me, and that would have been the end. She would perhaps have done nothing of the kind because she was not a respectable woman. Oh. She would have done what she wanted instead of what she ought. It might have been any of her pupils. Oh, no. She knew it was special pupils. Uh. When Mr. Fennick wasn't kind to me, you gave me a nice look. So, I knew you were special people. You were too embarrassed to notice. No. It is exactly what you notice when you are embarrassed, the nice looks. It was nicest of everybody. It is written in my diary. I can show you. You know I can't read written Japanese. Then you must believe me. I say many nice things about you in my diary. Mm. Shall we find a little house in Bombay? Yes, darling. Yes, we shall find a little house. Good. Mm. Everything is going to be lovely. There is nothing to worry about. There is one more thing. Only it isn't worry. It's exactly the opposite. What is it? Well, now we've had our honeymoon. Will you marry me? Oh, my God. What is it, my love? I have told you, darling, you will never have to marry me. But I want to. Please do not ask me again, Michael, please. Was well, this because you're Japanese and I'm English? Look how we've been accepted by other people here. Everyone knows you're Japanese. Everyone's so fond of no, you. No, it is something else. Well, what happened in the Japanese summer house? You're not still worried about no, that? No, that is past now. Please, Michael, I want you to promise me. Never ask me to marry you. <laughs> darling, what is it? Nothing else. I must take some aspirins. I have some here in the picnic basket. Do you always carry aspirins? Perhaps people get it to headache. Here they are. Oh, some of glass is empty. Well, there's still some tea in my cup. Thank you. Say, how many are you taking? I'm used to aspirin. But Sabby's six. You'll make us ill. Here, just try two. Give me the other, please. They'll make you sick. Please, Michael, give them back to me. All right. Do you know why you get headaches like this? Perhaps I worry a little. I should not let you know this. But I thought you wanted me to know everything about you. Everything that matters. Now, I have taken my aspirin, and soon I shall feel all right. I would like to go pony riding again. Well, if you feel up to it. This is our last day here, Michael. This is the day that must last forever. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning sir. Uh, do be seated. Miss Way will be with you in a moment, but I wanted first to take this opportunity to welcome you back to school. I hope you all had a pleasant leave. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Those of you who went to the hills have been jolly lucky to miss the monsoon here. I've no doubt you're all acquainted with the news from the front. As an American statesman pointed out last week, we're definitely on the winning side. The only problem is that we're not winning yet. Well, now, I'd just like to see what progress we're making here. There is, after all, the possibility that one day we may actually have to interrogate a prisoner of war, distant as that prospect may seem to you at the moment. Mr. Finnick. Kyuka no Aida. Shimu mo yomimashita ka? Before you answer that, Mr. Finnick, uh, let me see. Uh, yes, Torrington. <coughs> what have I just said? Oh, um... I think you asked Flight Lieutenant Fennick um, if he'd been reading the newspaper, sir. Oh, well, yes, something like that. Uh, will you answer that, Fennick? Yes, sir. Uh, hi. Taxon, um, you may have the sir. Yeah, go on, go on. Now, Mr. Quinn, um, America o sensoni makikonda jikeno setsume shinasai. Um, just a moment, Quinn. First, will you translate that, Mr. Lamb? Yes, sir. Uh, you asked Flying Officer Quinn to describe the, inc the events which uh, brought America into the war. Yes, good. Now, Mr. Quinn. 
Very good. Very good indeed. As you say, it was the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, would you like to elaborate on the events leading up to that? I'll try, sir. Nagai Aida, America, Nihongun Kan, no, Zokyo, Shinpai Shikita. Drinking alone, Quinn? I'm waiting for someone. Do you mind if I sit at your table? Ah, well, there really isn't anywhere else. By all means, do. What will you have? Oh, it's all right. I'll get my own, thank you. Boy? Uh, yes, sir. Whiskey and soda? Certainly, sir. Remember, I want it today, not next week. Of course, sir. Well, how does it feel to be the star of the class? I didn't know I was. Oh, you're too modest, old man. Surely you noticed the brigadier beaming all over his face when you let rip with that stuff about the Japanese feeling threatened by America. I also said that America felt threatened by Japan. Oh, yes. Well, let's not argue politics. We're both on the same side. Or at least, I presume we are. I really wanted to talk to you about your startling progress with the Japanese language. Well, I've been trying hard. And so we're given to understand. Fenwick, what are you getting at? Well, they tell me, those who seem to know, that the best way to learn a language is with a sleeping dictionary. What does that mean? Oh, well, surely I don't need to explain that, boy. This is just an informal chat between brother officers. I'm not making any precise insinuations. Insinuations about what? Well, haven't you got a guilty conscience about something? Not that I'm aware of. Look, Quinn. I knew a long time before the holiday that you were having an intrigue with the Japanese teacher. I also know that you went away with her. I don't see that it's any business of yours. It is in a way, you know. I am senior officer attending the school. Anything about Miss Way or myself is nothing to do with you. That, as you will have gathered, is not my point of view. I have no objections to your amusing yourself. Oh, thank you very much. A number of our brother officers have found home comforts here in Bombay, that is only natural, but it is quite another matter to let yourself be seduced by a Japanese. Fennec, would you like to leave this table before I hit Now, them? don't be a fool, Quinn. We're at war with them. They're the enemy. Our job is to kill them, not make love to I'm them. warning you, Fennec. Get up and go, or I'll hit you where you're sitting. I wouldn't have... Perhaps you'd better delay that happy moment. Your lady love is making our way. Michael. Oh, Mr. Fennec. Michael, I'm sorry to be so unpunctual. Good afternoon, Miss Ware. Tell me, what is your real name? What do they call you in Japan, your family name? Fennec, don't you think you'd better hurry along to keep that appointment Yes, now? if you wish, Quinn. Oh, do have my chair, Miss Ware. Thank you. Thank you very much. Give that to the boy. If he ever remembers to bring my whiskey, old man. No doubt I'll see you both tomorrow at class. Oh, sleep well. What does he mean, sleep well? It's only five in the afternoon. A little saying of his, don't let it worry you. How's the house hunting? We have only been back in Bombay two days, my I know, but let's find this house as quickly as possible. What has upset you, darling? Coming back, I suppose. It's just that the sooner we have our own house with our own front door, the better. Oh, you know how much I want that, too. Sabi will seek little house with might and main. Oh, there's waiter. Can you get me, please, cold lemonade? Yes, of course. Waiter. They're coming, sir. A lemonade, please, with ice. And another gin and Italian for me. Uh, yes, sir. I have brought whiskey and soda for other, sir. Has he gone? Yes, he couldn't wait, but he left this for you. Oh, thank you, sir. I will leave whiskey and soda for you and the men, sir. No, thank you. Take it away, please. Uh, but what can I do with it, sir? It is paid for. Take it to a lavatory and pour it away. Yes, sir. To a lavatory, sir. As you say, sir. Come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Oh, yes. Uh, sit down, Quinn. Cigarette. Oh, thank you, sir. Mm. Can I get used to some of these beastly cigarettes they're sending us now? I'm sure this lot was made of straw scrapings. <laughs> well, how did the leave go? I went to Yalital with a friend. Oh, good. I believe it's very pleasant there. Do you know why I wanted to see you? No, sir. Well, it certainly wasn't to complain about your ability with Japanese. You're doing so well. Oh, thanks, sir. Yes, perhaps a little too well, Quinn, would you say? I don't quite follow, sir. No, there's a rumour afoot about you and Miss Way. May I ask who passed this rumour on to you, sir? Oh, now you know I can't answer that one. Would you say there's any truth in this rumour? Do I have to answer that, sir? I think you have answered it. As you'll appreciate, since the rumour has been carefully laid at my doorstep, I am duty-bound to look into it. 
Are you intending to take some action? You're a good man, Quinn. If I have any complaint, it is that I'm too old for Miss Way myself. She's one of the most charming women I've ever met. And to me, represents all the finer qualities of the country, which we are unfortunately fighting. Not everyone regards that country as having any fine qualities, sir. I know. War hate is a terrible thing. It's corroding all of us. However, to the matter in hand, I have two points of interest in this. The first is my concern that this relationship should not in any way cause embarrassment to Miss Way. I have always tried to prevent that, sir. Yes, I'm sure you have, Quinn, but please continue to be discreet at all times. Yes, sir. My second point of interest requires me to take you into my confidence. Miss Way has a guardian in England, Lord Durriston. You may have read some of his speeches in the Lords on the need for the Allies to define their war aims. I have indeed, sir. Well, Lord Durriston asked me to keep an eye on Miss Way while she's here in India. You mean you've known all along about me? Well, Miss Way does sometimes confide in me. Well, naturally, I prefer this not to be known in school. While she's here, she's one of the teaching staff. But because of the trust that's been vested in me by Lord Durriston, I'm put in the extraordinary position of having to ask what your intentions are. I want to marry her. Yes, that's what I gathered. You don't approve, sir? It's not really a question of my approval. She's told me about this. She, she doesn't want to marry you because she's afraid for your happiness. So I think you should remember that she may be right. I'll risk it, sir. Well, that is the gallant line to take. No, it's not at all gallant, sir. It's what I want. There may be factors which you can't clearly see at present. I want to be able to rely on you, Quinn. In what way, sir? I want you to do your best to look after her. That's not very difficult. Well, you never know. You, you may have a hard time. Because she's Japanese? Partly that. It's just that I want you to promise me that, come what may, you will look after her and never desert her. I give that promise, sir. Good. By the way, there's no need to tell her that we had this chat. If you prefer not, sir. No. Now, then, wearing my other hat as your superior officer... I'm duty-bound to make one final comment. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a stupid sort of thing, really, but... Never threaten to hit a fellow officer in public, old man. I almost lost my temper, sir. I'm sorry. Indeed, yes. But should the compulsion ever become more than you can bear, do it where the Indians can't see. While we're still sitting on this country, we've got to keep up a bit of a front, hmm? Yes, sir. And thank you, sir. So, you like our little house? It's marvellous. How did you find it? I wish that we enter our house together. Here's the key. Oh, Sabri, I love you. <laughs> but please, mm. not on doorstep. Neighbours will complain. <sighs> open door and we love inside. All right. I open door. We shall cross the threshold together. And I shall carry you over in <laughs> style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there we are. Oh, oh look. Oh. Already a letter for you. I find it at your boarding house. Oh, thank you. It is official envelope. Perhaps they make you air vice commodore. No. It's not quite like that. Here, you read it. You are required to report at... Oh, 0800 hour at Kompo within eight days in order to act as an interpreter to Japanese prisoner of war camp. I... You must leave Bombay. I couldn't stay forever. We shall have only one week in our house. I won't be away forever. No. It will never be the same, Michael. You were sent to Bombay only to learn Japanese. I have taught you too well. Now you must go back to the war. Will we leave? We have this house. No. I know this would happen one day. I have decided what to do. Well, surely you'll continue at the school. Not now. Not without you. I did not say. But the wireless people in Delhi wish me to read over the wireless in Japanese. You mean propaganda? It is only just the news. Wouldn't you mind reading English news to Japan? Not if it is true. Michael... I want your side to win the war. Our side? It's yours, too. When you have leave, would you come to see me in Delhi? I would come to see you anywhere in the world. Oh, Michael. I believe you will. 
I truly believe you will. Have you seen a prisoner of war camp before, Quinn? No, sir. Well, don't start by feeling sorry for them. They're darn lucky our troopers didn't kill them out of hand. That's what they do to our chaps, you know. You lost a brother, didn't you? In Singapore, sir. Yeah, bad show, that. It's rather grand, this place, don't you think? A fortress in the jungle. Built by the Mogul. Yes, I gathered that from the minaret. Do you want to talk to any of the prisoners? If I may, sir, I'd like to get to know something of their mentality. Bit of a psychologist, eh? Uh, this one speaks English. I do speak Japanese. Oh, sir. yes, yes, of course. Still, have a word with this fellow if you wish. Open up, Sergeant. Yes, sir. On your feet. <sighs> this officer wishes to speak to you. Sir. Doko karakimashita ka? Do you mind using English in my presence, Quinn? If you wish, sir. Where do you come from? I come from Nagasaki. And what was your work there? I work in shop. I sell shoes, horse sizes. Where were you captured? Arakan. What happened? I harassed my unit and went to sleep in jungle. I woke up and saw English soldiers. I tried to put the grenade to my stomach, but they caught me first. Why did you try to do that? For Japanese, it is shameful to become prisoner. Are you sorry you didn't succeed in killing yourself? I don't know what to think. I think uh, soldiers torture me, but they not torture me. I'm grateful for kind treatment, but I cannot go back to Japan. Why? Prisoners never return. Ashes are sent back to family in Japan. Never disgraceful prisoners. Excuse me, Captain Manning. Uh, uh, Major Fothergill's waiting outside. Oh, yes, thank you. Had enough, Quinn? Yes, I've had enough, sir. Oh, morning, Fothergill. This is Flying Officer Quinn. Just come out to join us. Quinn, Major Fothergill. Uh, Pleased to meet you, Quinn. <clears throat> Manning, uh, there's some action going on up the road to Impal. Yeah. I'm taking a staff guard rather wrecked. Do you want to come along? Well, that might break the monotony. How about you, Quinn? Yes, if I may. Well, the more the merrier. The car's ready, and I've got a seat driver standing by. You know, I'm very worried about the way our little yellow friends keep pushing through the jungle. We keep to the roads, but them, <laughs> show them a jungle, and they're through it like a dose of Epsom salts. Yeah. <laughs> You all right in the front there, Quinn? Yes, thank you, sir. I must say there are plenty of our chaps around. Uh, that convoy we just passed is on its way to Impal. They've got the wind up there. So how long will it take us to get there? At this speed, uh, I'd say an hour. It's three o'clock now. You'll be there in time for afternoon tea in the mess. Have a die. Your car radio. Could hmm? it pick up Delhi from here? Yeah, I think so, sir. You'll switch on there. Oh, thanks. Have you seen much of the fighting? Uh, in Malaya, sir. Uh, we fought our way out. There was too much bombing. Some aircraft with one fan, some with two fans, but always too much bombing. Uh, while this will be warmed up now, sir, I will try to tune in to Delhi for you, sir. Uh, ah, that is Delhi, sir. Oh, thank you. This is Delhi. You have just heard Symphony Number no. 9 in D minor, Opus 125 by Beethoven. For the next quarter of an hour, there will be news for Japanese... Uh, you wish I find more music, sir? No, I wanted to hear this. I think it's a friend of mine. Daily Hoso desu. Kochira ga Daily Hoso desu. America no Roosevelt Do you really understand this stuff? Fairly well, sir. What the hell? There are trees across the road, sir. Yeah, I know, I can see them. I, I will get out and move the trees, sir. No! I don't think that. He fell there accidentally. There's no sign of any jobs. You'd hardly expect them to be standing around waving flags, would you, Major? Well, turn that damn radio off. Um, may I suggest, sir, that we wait until the convoy catches up with us? Then if it's an ambush, we've got plenty of support. Yeah, and if it isn't, we look damn foolish to all those troops. I think this is something we should handle ourselves. Oh, what do you propose doing? I shall move that tree. It only needs one man. If there's any trouble, the driver is to reverse the car immediately and get back and warn the convoy. Well, what about you, sir? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, Quinn. All right, driver. Keep your foot on that clutch. Sir. There won't be more than a moment. It all looks quiet enough, Major. I know. But with jungle on either side... Oh! Ah! Turn 
the car! Yes, sir. My God, look at them. They're coming at us from all sides. Get this car turned round. But we are stuck, sir. Stuck in the mud, sir. Surrender to those yellow bastards. I'll blow that officer's head off first. Drop Volvo. If I die, you die. My soldiers, kill you all. It's no good, Major. Unless you want us all to be killed. You are now the captive of Dai Nihong, whose emperor, the son of heaven, is a direct descendant of the ancestral divinity Amaterasu Umikami. <coughs> Turn to attention. Will I speak to you? That is better. You very fortunate men, to be captives of a power with such heritage. <laughs> it is better fate than being free men in an inferior nation. Japan is... You've caught us. Can't we get on with the slaughter right away instead of all this claptrap? Oh, you are major in army, yes? Yes, and that's a couple of ranks above you. Then I remove all ranks with my knife. So, and so... <laughs> now you have no major badges. You are reduced to nothing. Well, that action was entirely contrary to the rules of war under the Geneva Convention. Your rules, not ours. I will continue. Henceforward, as lucky captives of Dai Ni Hong, your allegiance is only to our emperor. I now command you to bow to the east towards the palace of the emperor. I refuse. Major, it doesn't mean anything. You flying men, be quiet! I give command once more. All three must bow towards fellows of emperor. I'm loyal to my king, not to your emperor, Major. Then I pull guns. So! Major, do what he says. And I fire! <laughs> Do not touch fallen men. But I, I... All prisoners of Japan receive clemency. Oh. It is the order of our emperor. I will now stop men from suffering. <laughs> Major is now dead. And at this instant has joined his ancestor. He is now happy man. If they forgive him for becoming prisoner. I now command you both to bow towards... Fellows of Ambala. Sate! Wake up. <coughs> Wake up. Hey. Y yes, sir. What is it? They brought us our rice for the day. The guard wants us to stand up and bow. Sate! All right, we're going to stand up. There. Does that suit you? Hmm? Yosh! The good Sergeant Sakamitsu says, will you trade your turban for double the normal rice ration? I asked this question yesterday and the day before and all of the week. Please tell him, sir, no, it is against my religion. Dame da toite masu. Ten noga, o kokorozo kayo, mizena katra, kubio kichao. So shtara, boshi mo eranai daro. He says rather charmingly that had not the Emperor ordered clemency for all prisoners, he'd cut off your head. Then you would not need your turban. Please tell him, sir, I would also like to cut his head off. You'd better tell him that yourself. Huh? Here. Eat your rice, Rush. Uh, yes, sir. As he gone, sir. He's making his way back to the officer's hut. I believe that Sergeant Sakomitsu will kill us both, sir. Well, they've kept us alive up to now. Because they do not know what to do with us, sir. If they have to retreat, I do not believe they will take us with them. Sergeant Sakomitsu will definitely kill us. There are only 20 of them. I have counted them. Those 20 men have guns. We don't. Even so, sir, we have no information. They do not know. You and I cost them rice every day. Night and day, a sentry must stand guard outside our hut so he cannot fight for Emperor. Do you see any chance of escape? Not a big chance, sir. But... With one ration of rice each day, we become weaker. Today, we can still run. Perhaps tomorrow, only walk. Three more days, we shall crawl. I apply, sir, for permission to escape. Lieutenant Nakamura is the man to apply to, not me. Please, do not joke, sir. We shall shortly, definitely die. There is only one sentry between us and the jungle. I'm sorry for joking. How do we get past that sentry? Hmm? Well, 
It is the religion of the Sikhs always to carry a knife. I know they found yours when they searched us. Yes, sir. It is still the religion. What are you getting at? I still have another knife. I shall kill the sentry. Oh, why didn't you mention it before? Because I am most ashamed. No soldier in wartime should be ashamed of concealing a knife. It is in my turban. <laughs> in your turban? And I, I think it may be against my religion to use turban in this way. That is why I am most ashamed. Yes, I'm sure you'll be forgiven. When do you propose to deal with the sentry? One hour after it is dark tonight, sir. Right. Yes, we shall have to kill the sentry. Tonight. Sir. Hmm? Sir, can you see which soldier is left to guard us tonight? The one with the glasses. Ah, uh, the stupid one. Please, call him into the hut, sir. Tell him I'm ill and will sell my turban for medicine. Say the sergeant will be pleased to know this. What if he calls Sakamitsu over here? Oh, he will want honor of taking turban direct to sergeant. All right. Karichwa! Huh? Anatato hanashoshtai. Nanda. Indu jinga bukida. Ksurinot tamani bosho iriktai sawadas. He's coming over. Indu jiwa doshida nanda. He says, what's the matter with you? Oh, I'm dying of fever. I need doctor. <laughs> Medicine. Karewa shini sodato te masu. Ask him to come into the hut and take my turban. Oshin nara kare no boshio motte te moi. Kumisu gonso yonde kimasu. He says, Alfred, Sergeant Sakamitsu. Ask him if he wishes the honor of taking my turban to the sergeant. Indo jinyo boshio sakumitsu ni motte te kuremasuka. Yoshi, wakatta. He says, yes, fine. Uh, tell him to reach over me and take it from my head. Indo jinyo atama kara totte mo yoi. Arigato. Sanko misu gonso mo yorokobu doro. Now, please. Please, now, be very quiet, sir. Now, so quickly, into the jungle. We run together towards the west. Right. Which way is west? This way, sir. It's Sakamitsu calling the sentry. We must run, sir. He will hear us, but we must run. Right, come on. Where are you hit? In legs, sir. You must run there. Here, get your arm around my shoulder. You yourself are wounded, sir. Huh? Oh, it's not much. Now, come on. How are you feeling now? Sir? Look, I've found some berries to eat. Oh, let me see, sir. Ah, uh, those berries poisonous, sir. We shall both die immediately, sir, if we eat those. We shall both die anyway if we don't find something to eat. Uh, see how your leg's getting on. Oh, it is not very good, sir. Do not look. I said, let me see. Oh, my God. Oh. I, I cannot travel from this place, sir. You must go alone. I regret that I cannot accompany you, sir. Listen. Perhaps it is Japanese guns, sir. Even if they are, our side can't be all that far away. Come on, get your arm around my shoulder. No, no, I, I shall impede you, sir. I'm giving you an order. Yes, sir. If I may take your hand, sir. Come on. Easy does it. <laughs> now, try hopping on one foot. That's it. You see, we may find our own people before dark. There'll be food, doctors, medicine. You'd better lie down. I, I stay here, sir. I stay in this very place. It's not far now. Oh, God, it can't be far now. Sir. What? Sir. Sir, I'm having strange dreams, sir. My mother is beckoning to me. Think sir. about your wife. And mother. That little son you have. I can see my mother calling oh, to me. Oh, God, try to live. Try not to die. 
sir. Yes. You will take things from my pocket? Yes. Send them to my wife? Of course I will. Please try to live. Please try. Oh, God. If you exist, why do you let men kill each other? Why are you letting this man die? Good afternoon, Quinn. Good afternoon, sir. How's the arm feeling now? Rather stiff. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Not too bad. You'll be all right in a few weeks. I'll just redo your bandage. How long will I have to stay here? Huh? You're in luck. Only a matter of hours. We've got the airstrip operational again. I didn't know it was damaged. You've hardly done anything for the past three days. You've been delirious. Talking away in Japanese, I was rather impressed. Do you understand the language, sir? I spent quite a number of years in the country before all this nonsense started. Uh, where did you learn? Bombay. Not Brigadier Hopkins' outfit. That's right. <laughs> Small world. Hopkins and I work together in Tokyo. Well, if I'm ever sent back there, I'll give him your regards, sir. Yes, please do. There. All finished. Could you tell me the time? Almost three o'clock. Why? I wondered if there might be a wireless I could listen to, one that would pick up Delhi. Oh, yes, the news in Japanese. I listen to that sometimes myself, just not to get rusty. Incidentally, he announced yesterday that the Russians had retaken Stalingrad. Hey? Yeah, for the past week it's been a man. Do you know the people at the wireless station? One of them. Not Miss Worry. Yes. I thought I recognized her voice. Well, I'll be done. Where have you met her then, sir? Well, I was in Bombay not many moons ago. Hopkins asked me to check her over. A very brave woman. You mean coming to India on her own? Partly that. What did you mean by brave? She's not always too well, you know. Now, uh, I'll see what I can do about getting a wireless in here. Can you tell me what's the matter with her, sir? I said she's a very brave woman, Quinn. I can't say more than that. You didn't realize there might be something wrong? No. Except that she gets headaches sometimes. Those must be very bad headaches, Quinn. Do you want me to see about the wireless? Not really, sir. I think I just want to get to Delhi as quickly as possible. Have you got an aircraft going to Delhi? Huh? Well, there's something always going there from here, old chap. Have you got a pass? Uh, yes, to the military hospital here in Calcutta. Ah. You something against going to our hospital? They tell me the nurses are very fine. I simply want to go to Delhi, sir. Nothing like knowing your own mind, is there? But uh, not a hope, old chap. But I have to get to Delhi. I can't just conjure our passes out of thin air. Everybody wants to go somewhere, and it's my job to see they go where they're supposed to go. Are there any trains? I believe there are, occasionally. All right, then. Which way is the station? It's a hell of a long way from here, old chap. But to take a gurry. But look, if you're supposed to go to the military hospital here... I'll risk then... that, thank you. Look, I I'm sorry, old chap. We aren't a bloody travel agency. Let's get to Delhi. Hey! Quinn! Oh. What are you doing here? Well, despite my poor knowledge of the language, I'm on my way to the front to interrogate some of the Japanese prisoners. Well, you'll probably enjoy yourself. Now, excuse me, Fennec, I'm in a well, hurry. Well, no, surely you can spare a moment. What's happened to you? How did you get your arm in a sling? Someone took a shot at me. I thought you'd be having friendly chats with the prisoners. They took me prisoner. My God. How? Does it matter? How do they treat you? Oh, not very well. Well, perhaps you'll stop having romantic illusions now. Fennec, I've told you I'm in a hurry. Why? I've got to get to Delhi somehow. Or Delhi? Why the hell there? It's a personal matter. Oh, yes, of course. That's where she went. She's working for the radio, isn't she? She was. She's been off the air for a week. I feel she may be ill. You mean, after what you've been through with the Japs? I don't understand you. I've got to see her. You're really serious, aren't you? Perhaps I'll see you again sometime. Goodbye, Fanny. Well, look, just a minute. Look, if, if you've got to see her, I mean, why can't you get a plan? I haven't got a pass. Well, is that the chap over there? Yes, but it's no use. Well, let me try. You wait here. Now, what's all this about refusing that officer a flight to Delhi? What? Oh, him. Well, he hasn't got a pass. You can issue him one. The only time I can issue a pass myself is under very special circumstances, so I'm sorry. Well, there's someone in Delhi who's ill. This officer needs to see her. Ah, uh, her. It's, um, his wife. <laughs> Why didn't he tell me to start I've with? I've no idea. He's had a rough time. He's just escaped from the jump. Oh, I see. You sure he didn't, um, drop his pass? Oh, for heaven's sake, we're not playing games. Aren't we? You're sure this pass lying on my desk, isn't he? I tell you, he hasn't a pass. Well, this one's been lying here for some time. What's his name? Quinn, but I've just Is told you... Is that one N or two? Ah, uh, uh, yes, yeah, two Ns. 
Uh, Flight uh, Lieutenant Michael Quinn. Some people are very careless, you know. You should always see that your, your name's on your pass. There, that seems to be all in order. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And you better tell your friend that a plane in five minutes. Yes. Yes, yes, I will. Here you are. One part. Hmm? Oh. How did you do it? I said you had to see your wife. I see. Well, I'm grateful. There's a plan in five minutes. And uh, remember me to Miss Ware? Of course. Can you please connect me with the radio station? Uh, yes, sir. Civilian or military? The civilian. Radio Delhi. Uh, yes, sir. Have money ready, please. I have no money, but it's very urgent. You have no money, sir. I cannot make telephone calls. Listen, I think someone is ill, and I've just escaped as a prisoner of the Japanese, and if you don't make telephone call, I shall come round personally to the telephone exchange and knock your head in. Not because you make personal threats, sir, but because you have compassionate reason, I shall make telephone call now. I'm very sorry for what I just there said. There is no need to apologize, sir. Here is your number now. Radio Delhi speaking. Uh, uh, could I speak to Miss Way, please? Who is that speaking? Uh, my name is Quinn. I'm oh. a friend of Miss Way. Uh, Miss Miss Way is in hospital, Mr. Quinn. She collapsed over a week ago, didn't you know? No, I've been away. What's the matter with her? I don't know that I can discuss the station's personnel over the telephone, Mr. Quinn. I suggest you go to the hospital. Where is it? The King George Hospital, but I don't know that you'll be able to see her. Well, how ill is she? I think you should ask at the hospital, Mr. Quinn. All right, thank you. Along here, Mr. Quinn. What's happened to her? She's had a serious operation. I should warn you, her head's all bandaged up. You mustn't stay very long, Mr. Quinn, and she mustn't be excited. It must only be a few minutes, Mr. Quinn. Yes, I understand. Sabby? Who is it? It's me. <sighs> Michael. Michael. It's all right. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Oh. You're crying, my darling. I'm so happy. Oh. Sabi. Sabi, what have they done to you? What have they done to your arm? Oh, it's only a little wound. You've been hurt, darling. The only thing that hurt was worrying about you. You knew this was going to happen. You knew, didn't you, all along? Yes. I knew. You ought to have told me. I did not want anything to spoil happiness. It was just selfishness, you see. Wanting all the time to keep happiness. I did not want to think of end. I ought to have told you about end. There isn't an end. Yes. There has to be an end. Please don't mind, darling. Because it has been beautiful. And I love you very much. I love you. Then could you please lean to kiss me? I'm awfully dirty. My poor darling. You've been in jungle again. Was it bad? I'm not in jungle anymore. I'm with Sabi. I'm going to kiss her and make her well. You're just the same, darling. Soft, warm. No, I am different. There is no hair under bandage. Do you hate Sabi without hair? Your hair will grow again. The second time's always more beautiful. You just say that. You're the only person I've ever loved for everything about me. Won't you love anybody again for everything? No, no one but you. Please, will you love somebody else and be happy? I don't mind. Darling, when we're married, no, I'm going to... please don't say that. You promised you would not talk about that. We are not going to get married. Didn't you want to marry me? Yes, yes, darling. That is what I wanted with all my heart. Then we shall get married. After the war, where would you like to live? I go. You don't understand. We're going to get married, Sabby. Where do you like to live? I love the English countryside. Then it'll be a very old house in Gloucestershire with fine old beams and a good smell. In winter, we'll sit in front of a huge log fire. What will happen in summer? Oh, in summer, the garden will be full of gorgeous flowers. And you'll spend all your time walking amongst them. And perhaps I'll run a little store on the roadside and sell plums and apples and very lurid colored drinks. Can I help, too? Well, you can give teas in the garden. Everybody will stop at our house just to see you. Because I am a curiosity. No, because you are beautiful like the flowers. Darling, you're crying. No. It's only a little escaped tear. There's no need for tears anymore now. It is because I am very happy. Don't I look happy, darling? Yes. You look happy. 
Because I have been in love. You are in love. I'll get into trouble for dirtying your sheets. Come closer, darling. Sabi. What is it? It has been the most beautiful and heavenly thing that ever happened. Like having lovely dreams. It has not been like living at all. Sabi? Sabi. Sabi. Nurse! Mr. Nurse! Quinn, Mr. Quinn, I was just coming to tell you that you're human. Nurse, she's unconscious. She's... I, I was just speaking to her. She was saying please, something. Please, we were talking. Please, Mr. Quinn. I'll have to get a doctor, Mr. Quinn. Is she all right? No, Mr. Quinn. I think she's dead. They were very kind. They offered to get me a taxi, but I preferred to walk to the hotel where they'd booked me a room. Night air was still warm. Moon, high and vivid. White-clad figures passed me like ghosts. Sabby was dead. She had died of a brain tumour. There was a gentle wind. I could feel nothing as I walked on into the night. Though on the sign it is written, don't pluck these blossoms. It is useless against the wind, which cannot read. In that radio adaptation of Richard Mason's novel, The Wind Cannot Read, Michael Quinn was played by Martin Jarvis, Sabi by Tsai Chin. The brigadier, Alan Wheatley, Fennick, Anthony Valentine. Peter Sean Barrett, Mervyn and Norris, Nigel Lambert, Perry and Captain Manning, John Pullen, the Wing Commander, Major Fothergill, and Doctor, Peter Tuttenham, Rosie, Barbara Mitchell, Lamb, Japanese prisoner of war, and Sergeant Sakomitsu, Andrew Sachs, Nakamura and Kono, Christopher Kum, the Sikh, David Spencer, the woman radio announcer, and the nurse, Joe Manning Wilson. The play was produced by Martin Jenkins. <laughs>